This video will take you through my resin 3D printing process from start to finish on a small project. I have an Anycubic Photon Mono X printer and the Anycubic Wash and Cure Station. If you're thinking about getting a resin 3D printer or you're thinking about getting the Anycubic Wash and Cure Station or if you're just interested in seeing somebody else's process, you might find this video interesting. I've got a full-size keyboard for my laptop, and I hate how flat it lies on the desk, even with the legs turned out. I use an app on my phone to measure an angle I'm comfortable with, and I'll design some stands that hold my keyboard at a 25-degree angle. I've been working various 3D CAD packages for over 30 years. More recently, I started using Fusion 360, so I decided to design the keyboard stand in that. It's a right triangle that's three quarter inches thick with a tab on the bottom to hold the keyboard. To conserve resin, I made it thin in the middle and I even cut another triangle out of that. Next, I save it as an STL file so I can bring it into Chittabox and add supports. I tip the part up a little, set the supports to medium, and hit plus all to get the supports. And then I added several more supports near the bottom because I found that the default supports don't always hold the part on. Next, I duplicate the part, rearrange it on the build plate so they both fit, and save it out as an STL file with supports. I have to do that because this version of Chittubox won't save a file that the Photon Mono X will recognize. Now I open that file in the Photon Workshop that came with the printer. Here's the settings I use for the Anycubic Basic Gray that seems to work well for me. I should mention that I bumped my UV power up to 55%. The default is 50. Now I hit the slice button and generate the file for the printer. Copy that to my USB stick, stick it in the printer, and start to print. It took six hours to print, and then I prepared to pre-clean it before I stuck it in the freezer. I raised the build plate high enough so that I can hold it over the resin vat while I'm cleaning it. Scrape as much resin as I can off both the back and the front of the build plate. Here's a first look at the parts. A little more cleaning with a paper towel. At this point, I'm just wiping the build plate down. I haven't actually touched the part. Now I'll do a light cleaning of the part with bean green in a spray bottle and some paper towels. You can't see it, but I'm doing this over a garbage can. I'm only lightly rubbing on the part, not very hard at all. The main cleaning of the part comes after I get it out of the freezer. Next, with the hair dryer set on cool, I try to blow across the support area so that I can get any more loose resin out of there. Here's what the build plate and parts look like after the light cleaning. Now I head over to the freezer and drop it in for about 10 minutes. Well, the parts in the freezer, I clean up my work area. The paper tiles are pretty crunchy after I take them out of the curing station. And I do this because the resin's pretty nasty stuff, especially if you get it in your eyes. But once it's cured, it's pretty harmless. So I always throw the paper tiles that have resin in them into my curing station so that anyone handling the garbage won't get hurt by it and it's probably better for the landfills. I won't be using the printer for a while, so I'm putting the resin back in the bottle. I use a paint strainer and funnel and put the resin bottle in the box it came in to help hold everything up. Got these red squeegees that are normally used to apply window tinting to a car window. They do a great job and don't damage the FEP in the resin tray. They were recommended in a video from some other 3D printing guy. Do a final cleaning of the tray with a foamy spray cleaner and my mean green again and pack it away. It's been about 10 minutes, so I'll pull the parts back out of the freezer. It only takes some gentle scraping to get the parts off the build plate. The cold causes the aluminum tray to contract, and the resin doesn't contract as much, and that helps break the parts free from the tray. Now I set the washing cure up for washing. That's straight mean green in the tank. A lot of people use isopropyl alcohol, but I don't like the idea of having a couple of gallons of something flammable in my basement. I've heard the mean green can rust the bearing in the impeller, but I've been using straight mean green with no water, and it's been okay for a month now. When the wash is done, I'll set the basket on top and let it drip dry a little bit. Remove the wash tank and put the turntable back on for curing. Now I dry the part a little bit and use warm air on the hair dryer, and it helps soften up the support so they break off easier. The supports leave pock marks that you have to sand off. Right now the part's a little bit soft, so I don't sand those off till after it's cured. Cure it for four minutes with the part standing up. Now reorient the part so that the surface pointing down can be cured for two minutes. 
the lasting I cure uh, the supports I broke off. That's just to make sure that no uncured resin goes in the garbage. And now just several minutes of sanding. You don't need your gloves on since the parts have been cured at this point. I'm happy with my keyboard stands, and now you've had a chance to see my whole process from start to finish. I hope this helps if you're thinking about getting into resin printing. If you're already into resin printing, maybe you saw something here that might be helpful as well. If you found this useful, don't forget to like or subscribe and leave comments, and happy printing!